Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from KM6JGH, uh, who is a patron. And there's a special messaging system uh, in Patreon to message the creator. Uh, so this is what Alan did. He messaged me asking me a question. Um, if somebody does that, by the way, uh, these are people who are supporting the channel and their questions go up to the top of the heap pretty quickly. He says, hi Dave, KM6JGH, Alan here. This is a question about a mobile antenna, a tiny RV trailer, radials, grounding, and so on. Here's the thing, this trailer is a Jayco FB6, FBS166. So let's look at that here on the whiteboard. This is the trailer. It's a J-Feather Micro. Okay, we used to have a trailer of about the same length, single axle. Okay, now, um, see this bar running right here? It almost looks like a shadow, but that's a piece of metal. And the idea with that is if you're dragging this thing through kind of ugly areas, this will keep the brush away. Uh, from hitting the trailer, it's hoped. Okay, now uh, he wants to know what to do for an antenna. Okay, uh, will these act as a ground plane? Well, these are welded to the frame, so they act as part of the frame, and you can use the frame as your ground. Now, it's capacitive rather than resistive but it will act as something, it's more a counterpoise than a ground, but it will work really well. His radio is a, a G90. I've got one of those in my motorhome too. Now, um, he's looking at antennas and wants to know what to do with an antenna. First of all, there are two possible areas uh, for mounting. The top of the RV is plastic, and so it's not a good ground area at all. If you put an antenna on it and run something down to here to the chassis and bolt or uh, bolt it back to that with a, a good bolt with a star washer, make sure it cuts through the paint. Uh, you've got this very long ground run compared to your antenna. Um, I have seen a lot of people, uh, the backs of these things, if you look at the plan view of this. Here's the box. On the back is sort of a 4x4 four four square of uh, steel. And what you do with this normally is your sewer pipe uh, is stored in here. Okay. And however, you can, if you want, this is grounded, you can bolt a holder like this for mast, and the mast can go up. I know that looks like it's going backwards, but think of this in 3D. The mast is going up the back and comes out this way, and you can use that as a vertical antenna with a wide-range tuner right at the base. And just put a mast up like that. That's what a lot of people do. Now, over here in the front, you've got your, um, your A-frame tow bars that meet in the trailer hitch. And you can just see that uh, right here, where these things right here are the A-frame. It's called an A-frame because there's often a weld across here, so it can support propane tanks and stuff like that. Now, what you can also do is remove the propane tanks and then weld something in here, like a vertical piece of sleeve that you can slide a mask down into. And then what you put on this is, oh, we should use an appropriate color like orange. What you put on this is your screwdriver. 
screwdriver. Screwdriver is a vertical antenna made for mobile use that has a little motor here and you've got some sort of a, you can, you can pay anything you want for these. If you get one of the more deluxe models, it has a little unit inside that will tell you when this thing is in tune for the frequency that you want. And then this mounts right here and it's right working against the chassis. So it's got nice radials in effect. Now some of your, your propagation direction is going to be a bit this way. With this one here, you're going to be a bit this way. The only way to mount an omnidirectional antenna is right here. But again, this would tend to transmit more out to the sides than along the lengths, I think. You'd have to model it to find out. Now, our club trailer, uh, which we use for field day and things like that, has this kind of an arrangement here. And what we do is we put a mast down through it. It's up pretty tall, and we put a J-pole on top of it for two meters for, like, public service work and so on. So here's two ideas. Go off the ends like that. You don't have much choice here in the middle because the the middle it just isn't strong enough to hold anything up there's just wood stuff it's strong enough to withstand the, the hurricane force wind of traveling down the freeway but um, it's not strong enough to hold an antenna that's sticking up that as it goes this way tends to tear up the roof so these are after you stop you put in your telescoping plastic pole uh, or aluminum pole and or here you mount your screwdriver which you drop in there and attach a little ground wire uh, when you are parked. If I had a choice between the two I don't know what I'd do. I've seen this more often. This more often. Okay but this will work well. The front of the trailer as you can see here is not corrugated. If it were corrugated, we would say that it was made of uh, tin or steel or something like that. But this is a plastic fiberglass, I think it's fiberglass-like, we'll call it fiberglass-like, um, panel, laminated panel that is attached to this laminated panel out here. And these have not much in the way of conductors in it. So don't forget, either way you go, you're going to be in an RF field. Now with your G90 radio, which is only 20 watts, you shouldn't have so much of a problem. So Alan, I hope that gives you a couple ideas on what you can do. Those Nerf bars are undoubtedly welded to the frame uh, or attached to it, and I suspect they are steel uh, and not plastic, so they are part of the chassis and will act as a counterpoise for whatever antenna you put on it. The reason I call it a counterpoise is because your trailer has no direct connection to earth. You're not running a ground rod in there. Campgrounds would forbid it, uh, and there's no way you can get it out without uh, some pretty heavy equipment pulling that thing out. So um, give it a try. Let me know how you do. <clears throat> But it looks like you're going toward the automatic screwdriver. The reason I suggest putting it in front is that gets it a little ways away from the trailer itself. So the trailer itself and the wiring and stuff inside will not affect the pattern of it quite as much. It will affect it some, but not quite as much. So good luck in your camping endeavors and good luck with your radio camping endeavors. Um, I would like to pay special mention to uh, Daryl J. Cramphorn, uh, who is a patron and a recent patron. Thank you for becoming a patron of this um, channel. The channel needs funds to operate. If you would like to become a patron, you can do so by going to patreon.com, not the extra E, patreon.com slash KE0OG, and pick a way that works for you. Be sure to subscribe and click like, and until we next meet, 73.